Why is our woofy passive model showing a source energy consumption of infinity kilowatt hours per person per year? Well, let's take a look in this video at why that is happening and what we need to do in order to correct that. And then we will dive in a little bit more depth on how we set things like occupancy and internal loads, appliances, back in our Rhino scene. So first of all, I'm here in my Woofy Passive model, and if you've been following along, you should hopefully also be getting infinity kilowatt hours per person per year. And the, the reason for that is quite simple. While Woofy has pretty much everything it needs to know in order to calculate uh, some initial results, these results are f far from accurate uh, because we just haven't given enough information yet. And the main thing that we haven't told Woofy anything about yet are, or is, our internal loading. In particular, Woofy currently believes, because this is what we told it, was that we have zero occupants in our building. So we have not yet set anything to do with occupants or number of bedrooms, and as a result, Woofy is not able to uh, calculate the source energy per person. It's trying to divide by zero, getting an error, and giving us infinity. So how can we set these values? How can we set the occupant quantity, the number of bedrooms? Um, and then how can we build out the rest of this worksheet? Notice down here that we have a whole listing here for our uh, devices, um, interior appliances. As always, if we were going to do this in Wolfie Passive, it's quite straightforward. We would come in here and we would just set the number of occupants um, and the number of bedrooms. Let me just go and pull up our pull up our CAD drawings real quick. So just to remind ourselves what we're modeling here, we've got our first floor with our kitchen entry living den, and then we've got a second floor with one bedroom and two bedrooms. So we've got two bedrooms on the upper story. Okay, so we got two bedrooms, and so as far as Woofie's concerned, that's going to mean three people. So uh, three people, number of bedrooms plus one. So we can set our number of bedrooms to two, and we set our number of occupants to three. Uh, number of bedrooms plus one for residential occupancy. So notice right away we're getting better results down here. Our source energy is now able to be calculated. We're no longer dividing by zero, so now we can get some results. Still, still, these results are, you should ignore these. These don't uh, mean anything yet. We, we haven't given enough information to Woofy to calculate these things properly. Um, the other thing that we might do here if we were building out our project in Woofy Passive would be to come over here and use this set standard data set for a residential interior uh, fit out. So, you know, standard um, American um, appliance configuration with refrigerators, washer dryer, dishwasher, uh, cooking, and the like. So if you're working in North America, uh, specifically the U.S. and Canada, you know, this might be a common appliance set for, the type, for those types of buildings. Uh, notice here it's all configured with the sort of reference quantity and, you know, the sort of uh, some additional specifications. But as soon as I add that in, notice one thing that happens down here is Woofy starts to complain. It says, well, you know, you added something in particular, you added in a, you know, you added in a dishwasher, but then you didn't actually tell me what the energy consumption was. So while this set standard data set is useful to some extent, we still have to go through and fill in all of these values. So I have to say, oh, well, my dishwasher uses uh, 100 kilowatt hours per year. And then I have to go to the washer and I have to fill that in. So this is, this is not quite automatic. It still leaves us with an awful lot of sort of manual entry. So where do these numbers come from? How do I know what number to input there? Well, certainly you could go off and get the actual specification for your appliance. If you know exactly what type of appliance you're going to be uh, building or, or entering, go get the Energy Star rating, find the energy performance information. If you're in the early design phase, you know, let's say you're in the schematic phase, you probably have no idea what dishwasher you're using. And in that case, you want to just enter a sensible default value. To that end, if we go to our FIAS guidebooks, let me bring up the FIAS guidebook here, uh, FIAS 2021, our FIAS guidebook. FIAS guidebook does have some useful um, default values for these types of appliances. Uh, let's see, where are we? Um, internal, internal loads and occupancy. And I think if we come down a little bit, there we go. So the FIAS guidebook gives us some useful reference information. So for instance, dishwasher, how about 269 kilowatt hours per year as, a, as an entry? So if we were to now come back here, we could input 269 as a pretty good sort of um, you know, default value for dishwashers. But we don't want to do that every time, and obviously we don't want to be building these things out in Woofy Passive. It would be much better if this information was just automatic or was drawn directly from our Rhino 
model. So let's get rid of this and let's go back to our Rhino scene and see how we do all of this. How do we set the occupancy and how do we build out all these appliances back in our Rhino scene. So let me go ahead and close this and go back to our Rhino model. So I'm in my typical Rhino model here, Rhino Grasshopper model. I've got my multiple zones, I've got my glazing, I've got my interior uh, floors all, all defined here. And in our last uh, video together, we took a look at building out a mechanical system. So we got our mechanical system here with our fresh air ventilation. And the next step, as we've been saying, is to fill out our occupancy and appliances. And to do that, we're going to use a kind of similar pattern that we have been using throughout this entire sort of series. Um, we're going to build appliances and then assign those to the various honeybee rooms. So what do we want to work on first? Do we want to set a, uh, occupancy or set appliances first? Let's um, set appliance. Let's set appliances first. Well, let's set occupancy first. Actually, um, occupancy is a little more little bit more confusing um, and so let's let's talk occupancy first so let me uh, open up some room here and I'll make a new division and we will call this occupancy and we'll, we'll do our occupancy here now the only reason that occupancy occupancy the only reason that occupancy is a little more confusing is because the rules around occupancy and the tooling around occupancy have to work both for single-family homes like the one we're doing here and for multifamily homes. And for multifamily apartment buildings, there's a peculiar quirk of the FIA standard where a zero bedroom zone, a zero bedroom apartment, counts as one occupant. That would be like a studio apartment. So we have to be careful in our Rhino model not to tag any of our honeybee zones as zero bedroom because those would then come through as one occupant. I know that's really confusing, but the tooling has to work for both multifamily and single family. And so we'll, we'll see uh, kind of how we manage that in any event here in my honeybee passive, I can come over to my set occupancy. So this is my residential set occupancy It's all very different in non-residential, but for residential, I can use this residential set occupancy. I'll drop that onto the canvas and notice that this is going to take just a number of bedrooms and some honeybee rooms. So if I then took my honeybee rooms and fed them in and then said, well, you know, we said that this was a two bedroom building, right? So we said there were two bedrooms. Um, go back to our, our plans for just a second. We've got one bedroom, two bedrooms, so two bedrooms. If we did this, this would be wrong because what would happen is that the number two, two bedrooms would get assigned to room number one, and then it would also get assigned to room number two. So we would end up with four bedrooms total. So this is one of those places where we need to split our zones apart because we're going to have different assignments, different attributes for the different zones. We have a, a, a zone on the top with two bedrooms and then a zone on the bottom with zero bedrooms. To do that, we can just use some basic grasshopper tools. So I'll just use explode again. I'll use explode. I will take in my explode. I do have to graft this and then I will get as output here. Let me go ahead and simplify this. There's no reason for these to be so. Um, oh, that didn't work. Interesting. Anyway, uh, room. so we have room one on the top and room two on the bottom. So what we can do is we can take this and we can apply the two bedrooms only to room number to the to the top level to the top room and then notice the bottom room room number two is, is getting no bedrooms assigned whatsoever once this assignment is completed once this uh, once the uh, bedroom assignment has been completed what we want to do is then merge these zones or these excuse me honeybee rooms back together so we use a merge command this is again just standard uh, grasshopper so we'll flatten the output and then we pass this along in the chain. Okay, so notice what's happening here. We're grabbing just one of the honeybee rooms, assigning two bedrooms to it. The other one we're leaving alone. We're not touching it. We're not making any modifications to it. And then we merge the two rooms back together and then pass them along. When we do that, let's just take a look at what happens when we do just that before we get into appliances. Let's take a look at that. When we do that, what we'll find, whoops, not Rhino. Sorry, definitely don't want to open up another instance of Rhino. Close that. So we'll go back to our Woofy Passive, say open. We will go to our desktop. And we'll open up the new timestamped version, say yes. 
Calculator shading. Da -da -da. Come on. There we go. And so notice we're getting good results. If I now come to my internal loads, notice here I'm getting three occupants, two bedrooms, just as we would expect. Right, so, so our top room here is getting tagged with two bedrooms, and our bottom is not getting tagged with anything. Importantly, it's not getting tagged as zero bedrooms, because in Fias world, zero bedrooms means one occupant. And that would be incorrect for a single family home. Um, I know that's a little bit confusing, but that's just you know the way that the software here and the protocol is sort of set up. So just keep that in mind. Um, uh, so zero is different than none uh, in in this in this universe. So in this world, the bottom room has uh, none bedrooms uh, rather than zero. <laughs> no, it's a little a little weird. All right. These is previewed off. So there's our occupancy. Uh, okay, so occupancy is set. That's all working. Um, obviously, it can get very complicated with you know bigger multifamily buildings. But for a small building like this, we could just set our occupancy pretty straightforwardly. All right, so let's go ahead and build out a little more room for our appliances. So that was the other piece that we wanted to attack in this video. So we've got our, our occupancy set. Now let's set our appliances. And appliances are very simple. We, I'll show the sort of really simple way to do it, and then I'll show um, the way to do it a little bit more customized fashion. Here in our Honeybee PH ribbon, we've got two main uh, components here where we can build or create new appliances and then add those new appliances to our rooms. So we can, of course, build out a custom appliance set with all the different values that we that we might want uh, for our project. But we don't have to do that. Uh, and in many cases, especially early in the design phase, it's going to be much easier to just use some default values. So to do that, we can use this add passive house equipment, which is going to take in our Honeybee rooms, and it's going to kick out our honeybee room. It's going to make some modifications to the rooms along the way. And notice here that we've got a couple of different default values that you can use. And in in, in, in particular, for FIAS projects, there's actually three different configurations of defaults that you might want. You might want to be implying single-family defaults. You might want to be applying multifamily residential defaults. Or you might want to be applying multifamily non-residential or essentially no appliances where you'd want to custom build your appliance set. So for our purposes, let's go ahead and say that we just want single family default. So for single family default, all I have to do is input uh, number one. Notice on the tooltip here, it says input a number one for single family residential appliance set. So I just import that. And that's all I have to do. So this is now applying all of the standard appliance uh, data from the FIAS protocol to our model. So I'll re re rewrite my Woofy model one more time. Come over here. I will say open, say no, come up to my desktop, grab the new one, say open. And now when I come to my internal loads, notice that I've got all my appliances. And importantly, notice that I've got the, say, kitchen dishwasher with 269 kilowatt hours already entered. One of the things that we've done with this tool is to take all of those numbers from the FIAS guidebook and just build them into the tool. So you don't have to enter those values one at a time. They're automatic. They flow through uh, by default. Now, of course, you can go in and customize any of this. You can add in or build out your own custom uh, data however you like. So let's just look real briefly at how you might customize this, how you might add in a new piece of equipment to this default set. So let me go back to our Rhino model here. If I wanted to add in some new equipment, all I have to do is build new equipment and then feed it into this equipment input here. So I can build new equipment by using this Create Passive House Equipment component drop that onto the canvas. This component is a little bit um, unique in that um, it allows you to build multiple different types. So the first thing we need to do with this, p this component is actually tell it what type of equipment we're building. So we have to give it a type. And we give it a type by using this guy right here, this appliance type. This appliance type has all sorts of um, different appliance types here. And all we have to do is say to the component, oh, you are a dishwasher. And notice now we get the attribute inputs for dishwasher. By contrast, if I said fridge, notice that we get a different set of attribute inputs. So this component is going to allow us to build our, our different pieces of equipment however we like. So what should we add to our project here? Maybe let's add, um, well, let's just, I mean, let's just go ahead. Let's just add a custom electric. 
let's just use a custom electric per year. Let's say custom electric per year. And for that, really all I need to do is input a number. So let's say I want to add in a thousand kilowatt hours per year. So that'll be my energy demand. Now we can kind of configure a bunch of this other stuff. Um, one important other attribute we might want to f apply would be the comment because that is going to track through into Woofy. So maybe I would call this as custom electric uh, appliance. You know, maybe this is a, I don't know, an elevator, uh, who knows what, whatever, whatever it is that you're building into your building that has some additional energy consumption, um, you can apply that here as a sort of standard, you know, kilowatt hours per year. Notice over here, when if I hover over, uh, kilowatt hours per year. So it's custom electric. So if I take this equipment, so now I'm getting some equipment, so I have a piece of equipment, and all I have to do is take this equipment and add it to my equipment input here. This gets added to those honeybee rooms. We'll come back over to our writer. We'll write this out one more time. And now when I come back to Woofy Passive, I say open, go to my desktop, grab the newest file, say open, Yes. Shift over. Go to my internal loads. Notice we are, notice here we have we have a new user defined and notice it is Ed's custom electric appliance, thousand kilowatt hours per year. So we can, of course, customize this. If you don't want to use the defaults, you can just build out your own custom, you know, set of appliances. Um, or you can either do it in Grasshopper, or you can do it, you know, using some uh, library managers. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of different ways that you could build out these appliance sets. Of course, the easiest thing to do, especially if you're early in design, is just to use those defaults, just to, to use the, the default set there. And as I, as I noted, all of the uh, default values from the FIAS uh, 2021 guidebook have been entered into the tool. So things like uh, uh, long laundry, uh, dishwashers, fridges, freezers, th those values have been taken directly from the guidebook and built into the tool so that you don't have to enter those manually anymore. Uh, at this point, I think, uh, let's see, we can come down here, we can calculate our shading one more time, and now we're actually getting some, you know, believable numbers, so things are, are, are sort of um, shaping up a little a little better here. There's still plenty that we haven't really addressed, we, we haven't really talked about the rest of the mechanical systems, we certainly haven't built out all of our shading, we have not uh, assigned any of our assemblies, but you know, things are coming along, we're, we're starting to kind of fill in or flesh in our... our um, our model here, we're adding more and more detail every step of the way. Um, and of course, at any point, we can go back and revise or, or edit any of those inputs and sort of change things globally. So I think we will leave this video for here and we will come back in the next uh, video and, and sort of pick up where we left off and build out the next piece of our model here, continue refining and adding more detail to our Woofy Passive model.